Hello, my friends. This is Sylvie Curry, Lady of Q, and I'm in my kitchen. Today, I'm going to be making something different than what I usually do. Most of my friends know that I'm not a baker. I usually don't make sweet desserts or anything like that. But over the last couple of days, I've had a yearning for some cinnamon rolls. Now, this goes back to my days in junior high school, high school, and that was a long, long time ago, where they used to serve these cinnamon type rolls, not the tall ones, but they were kind of wide, but they still had the cinnamon and they had a glaze on them. And it reminded me of that. In addition, some other type of homey type things reminds me of when my kids were young, they used to love cinnamon toast. And when I had a little bit more time, I'd make them cinnamon rolls also. So it's sort of like a, a home feeling to me. These are trying times. Today is actually March the 17th, 2020. And anyone watching this would know that these are during the times when we were stricken with concerns regarding COVID-19 and health concerns, spread of disease, etc., and a lot of restrictions that have been put, in, put on us as human beings. And this is worldwide, not just here in the USA. Some of the restrictions or suggestions that were made were that, you know, a lot of us, quote unquote, elderly people need to distance themselves from the public in order to minimize the number of interactions that we have with other people. The big concern being that if this virus takes over as it has in places like China or Italy at this date, then it will overcome what we have in healthcare systems, hospitals, physicians, etc. as it will overtake how we can care for people because there will just be too many sick people. And with too many sick people, that means there'll have to be some decisions made of who gets treated, who doesn't. Who gets the ventilator, who doesn't. Who gets the ICU bed, who doesn't. So we're trying to minimize the number of people who get sick. And in order to do that, distance. Stay away from people. Nursing homes are not allowing their their residents to have visitors from the outside because they don't want them to get sick. The elderly are especially uh, vulnerable to this virus. So that's a big concern. The other thing is that by distancing, yes, it will take longer for people to get the virus if they're gonna get it. But at the same time, we will have systems in place to take care. What does that have to do with cinnamon rolls? Well. I'm at home, I'm distancing, and I have to do something with my time, so I'm cooking, baking, or anything in the kitchen. Here we go. These are the ingredients for my cinnamon rolls, and it's a basic recipe, and I took a combination of recipes that I found on the internet and put them together. So I want to give thanks to Preppy Kitchen, and I also want to give thanks to joyfoodsunshine.com because I use different bits and parts of their recipes in order to come up with this one. I'm going to be starting with four cups of flour and I have additional flour here on the side and that's for putting on the countertop when I'm kneading my dough. I've got a cup of milk, this is whole milk, and I've got a packet of yeast, and that's two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. I've got a half a cup of sugar, and I've seen recipes where they've used granulated sugar, and also those where they've used a combination of granulated sugar and brown sugar. I'm st sticking with sugar in the raw, uh, which is a granulated type sugar. I have an additional tablespoon of sugar, which is going to go in my milk which I'm going to be adding the yeast to, and that's just to help it bloom. I've got two eggs, two whole eggs. I've got a tablespoon of pure vanilla extract, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and six tablespoons of butter, which is going to be melted. 
All this is going to be combined in my KitchenAid and mixed together for the cinnamon roll dough. I've got my one cup of milk, which is warm, a little, little warmer than room temperature, and I'm going to put that in my bowl. In addition, I'm going to put in the one tablespoon of sugar and the one packet or two and a quarter teaspoons of dry yeast, active dry yeast. And I'll do a real quick, just mix it a little bit, and then we're going to let that, we're going to let that sit for a while as the yeast blooms. It's not necessary to actually wait for the yeast to bloom. We're only doing a test to make sure that it is active yeast and that it will bloom. Nothing worse than making a recipe and finding out that your yeast was bad. The milk, yeast, and sugar mixture has bloomed, so I know I have good yeast. So now the next step is to move on to adding the sugar, butter, and the eggs. I'm adding the two eggs. The half a cup of sugar. Pure vanilla extract. And my melted butter. Those are all in, and then I'll mix them to combine. And I've got a dough hook in here. I'm now going to combine the salt. We'll add that to the flour. In addition to the cinnamon. I'll sort of mix or combine the salt and the cinnamon with the flour just so that it more evenly distributes in my dough. We're now going to be adding the flour to our milk butter yeast mixture. And I'll do that a little at a time. to combine it. We'll let that combine for four to five minutes. I finished the mixing of my dough in the KitchenAid. And now I'm going to do a little bit of kneading here on the countertop with some flour down and transfer my dough onto that flour. We're going to be kneading this dough here on the countertop until it becomes smooth and elastic. And I believe we're almost there now. I did have it on the KitchenAid for approximately five minutes, so I got close. You can tell the gluten's formed a bit. And do that like a pizza dough where you sort of open it up and see if you can get it clear if it breaks. Okay. I've got my dough into a ball. And what we're going to do from here is put it in, I have a bowl which has some canola oil in it. And we're going to put it in that bowl. I'm going to cover it 
and we'll put it in a warm place. It does not have to be hot and warm, just room temperature will work. If you have a warming oven, just stick it in there. You don't even have to turn it on. If you have just a regular oven, just stick it in there, just as long as it's a warm place, room temperature type temperatures. We'll wait for about an hour, and this should double in size. The filling for my cinnamon rolls is a combination of brown sugar, cinnamon, and butter. Here I have one cup of brown sugar and two tablespoons of cinnamon. I'm just going to combine the cinnamon and the brown sugar together. I'm going to use the technique of having my butter softened so that I can spread it on my dough after I've laid it out and then sprinkle on the brown sugar and the cinnamon. I'm going to be putting a cream cheese glaze on these cinnamon rolls. The ingredients I have I've got eight ounces of cream cheese softened. I've got here a quarter of a cup of butter, which is going to be softened. Two cups of powdered sugar. A pinch of salt. And a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. My cinnamon roll dough was rising. I let it rise for about an hour and a half. And you can see that it's doubled in size now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some flour, lay it out on the surface so it won't stick. And we're going to pat that dough down, deflate it some, and Get ready to roll it in the shape of a rectangle. Got my rolling pin here. We want to get it about, I want to say about a quarter inch thick. And we're going for about 24 inches from here to there and about 12 inches across that way. I've got my dough laid out in a rectangle. It's approximately 24 inches this way and approximately 12 inches going across that way. I've got my butter and it's softened and I'm going to spread this all over the, the dough. There are different ways of doing this. You could take the sugar and the, and the cinnamon mixture and mix it all together with the brown sugar and then crumble it over. Or you can do it this way and just spread it evenly. Your choice, whatever way makes you, you happiest or you're more familiar with doing. Now that we've got our butter spread as evenly as possible over the, the dough, it's now time to add the cinnamon and brown sugar mixture. And that's just a matter of taking it in and sprinkling it all over. While cooking, that's going to combine with that butter and you'll have a lot of ooey gooey goodness going on in these cinnamon rolls. The cinnamon rolls that I referred to earlier from my childhood days was through the LA Unified School District. And I know that they had a recipe book that they used for all the LA Unified Schools of um, what they cooked. So if anybody out there knows what that exact recipe is or has access to it, I would really appreciate you letting me know. Okay, now that we've got the sugar and cinnamon mixture pretty evenly spread over this dough, we pat it in so that it sticks. And then starts the process of rolling it. So you're going to take 
this edge, the long edge, and we're going to be rolling it all the way across My rectangle making skills weren't the best, so this is what we have. I've got a pan that I sprayed some parchment paper for the bottom, and that's just to make it easier for me to get the rolls out later on, in case, just in case they stick. And I'm gonna start out by doing some cuts and I'll start there so that I can divide the dough into equal sections of cinnamon rolls and make another cut here and when you cut them with the with the knife it sort of squishes it in, but that's okay, you can reform it. Some of them came out pretty evenly centered. I'm gonna place them inside the pan, and we don't want them to touch because we're gonna let them rise again. So we'll take these, I'm gonna cover them and put them in a warm place and let them rise. And then we'll get ready to bake in a 350 degree oven. My butter and cream cheese have softened up quite a bit. And I'm blending them together. I'm going to next add a little pinch of salt and the vanilla. And combine all those. And then I've got powdered sugar. I'll put a little bit at a time. Blend it in. I think we're good to go for now. My cinnamon rolls cooked at 325 degrees convection, but you can use 350 degrees regular if you don't have convection. I've got my frosting ready, and I'm gonna put the frosting on while they're hot, just so that it will melt in there a little easier than if the cinnamon rolls were cold. Get each one of these bathed in that sugary goodness. I'm gonna let these cool off before I attempt to pull them out of the pan. But I just wanted to see what we got. <laughs> 